if you're looking to buy a used guitar, that can be kind of confusing. There's a lot of factors. But in this video, I'm going to give you some specific things to look for, and I aim to help clear up your confusion. In this video, I'm going to give you five things you should look for in a used acoustic guitar. Hey, I'm Derek at 5 Minute Music, and I have years of experience teaching guitar and helping students get electric guitars, acoustic guitars, and get their instruments. And one question that I get a lot as a teacher, but also on my YouTube channel is, hey, what do I look for in a guitar? Is this guitar any good? Can you help me set this guitar up? And so I wanted to do a video addressing those questions because it's a good question. My number one rule, and I give this to you wherever you are, and if you're looking to get a used guitar, my number one rule is get help. Someone that can be there with you and can physically look at the instrument with you. If you're not buying the instrument in person, that's tricky. Um, you're going to need to request a lot of pictures of different parts of the guitar and audio samples. Have them play it for you. Tell them, hey, can you play this chord, that chord, can you play this riff or whatever, and listen to it if you can, especially if you're sinking in a lot of money. But my number one rule is get help. I have a friend of mine who's a luthier. He, that's a person who builds and repairs string instruments, and he's done a lot of work for me on my guitars. So if I make any guitar purchase, I'm asking him questions. So find somebody like that. Any music shop in your area, if they don't have a luthier, will have someone that they work with most likely to do their repairs. So find out and then be prepared to pay that person some money. Go to that person and say, hey, if I pay you 20 bucks, will you look at this guitar for me? Uh, 40 bucks. So they might not be able to go with you, but they might be able if you can borrow the guitar or rent the guitar and take it to them before you make the purchase, that would be ideal. So get some help. Okay, so that's my number one rule. Now let's get into five specific things that you can look for. The first thing that I like to look for is the action height. How far is it between the strings and the frets? If you've got a big old distance, it's gonna be hard to press down the fret and that can be indicative of some other issues as well. But also if it's too low, it might be easier to push down but you're gonna get string buzz. Now, when I'm checking the action out, it leads me automatically into the other thing I'm checking for is the frets. So you can really kind of do two things at once. You can check out the frets and the action. So the frets, what I'm looking for are, is there any notches in the frets? Are they worn down? Are there any defects? And sometimes frets over time can get bent up or there can be damage on the fret and you'll hear that. So on this one, I'm gonna check out the action and the frets. So I'm just gonna go up. One at a time, and I'm gonna do that across every string. And I discovered a buzz in this guitar. And the cool thing about it was it wasn't from anything broken or wrong here, it's from a loose washer up here that I've got to tighten down. So no problem. Um, but a luthier could do that really easily for you. So I'm checking the action, I'm, how, how high it is up and how it is to push down. Is it too high, is it too low and buzzing? I'm checking the frets, are the frets good, okay? Well, another thing I'm gonna check out is the neck. A couple of ways to do that. I like to do this and look down the neck. Let's see if I can give you a picture down the neck. How about that, huh? So I'm gonna look down the neck and I'm looking, is it bent, torqued? Now, it's not the end of the world if you've got a little bend in the neck because you have the truss rod. See that little hole right there? See that little right there? That's where you stick the tool in and you can adjust the truss rod. Okay, the, the truss rod affects the tension. It helps to keep the neck in alignment. So again, if there is a little bend that's not necessarily the end of the world, it's just if you don't have anybody to adjust that for you, that can be kind of intimidating, adjusting that. And below in the description, I'm going to give you some resources of other people that are experts on this kind of stuff. Because I don't want to tell you how to do that because I don't even like adjusting my own truss rod. I like for my friend to do that. Um, so I'm looking for the action. I'm looking for the neck. Uh, I'm looking for the frets. Well, there's some other things I'm looking for too. I'm also looking to see if the bridge and saddle are in good shape. The bridge is this part right here. So this is the bridge and the saddle is this little piece right here. Okay, so recently I saw a guitar and the saddle was bent way over. 
that's a problem. Um, and also the bridge was coming up. It was coming away from the guitar. I've seen a couple of guitars like that recently. So that can be repaired. But again, if you're buying a guitar for a couple hundred dollars, you might not want to have to make a couple hundred dollars worth of repairs on top of it. So if you can avoid those problems, just avoid those problems. Just look and make sure that there is no gap, that it's not coming up like this, but this is laying flat and that this is in a good position. Okay? So again, the saddle, that's this piece right here, and then the bridge, that's that piece. Make sure they're laying, that the bridge is flat to the guitar and the saddle is in good position. And then another thing I look for, and this is more obvious, but it's cracks. <laughs> Just look through the guitar. Are there any cracks in it? Now, sometimes you'll see chips in the guitar where it's gotten banged, see these little marks. I'm not talking about scuff marks. I'm talking about marks where it's cracked, where there's a crack through the wood, where if you push on it, you know, push on one side or the other of it, it's doing this. <laughs> that's a crack in your guitar, and that's not a good thing. Again, those things can be repairable, but it's all about how much money are you sinking in. So there's some things to look for. And I just want to leave you with this thought. It's always better to spend some money on the front end and get it checked out because a luthier will be able to look at it and say, hey, this guitar is in great, you know, great condition. I don't need to do anything to it. Or they might say, hey, it just needs a little adjustment. It needs a neck adjustment and that's it. Or they might say, hey, there's some structural problems with this guitar and it's not going to hold tune. It's not going to play well. It's not worth your money. So there are five things to look for. And the number one rule, get some help. <laughs> so if you found this useful, please give me a thumbs up. I always wanna make sure that I'm giving you useful content that you enjoy and that you're learning from. And the thumbs up helps me know that. Also below, you'll see the question of the day in the comments. And the question of the day is, what acoustic guitar are you interested in? Let me know, I'd love to know what kind of acoustic guitar you're looking for. And in the description section below, I'm going to leave a link where you can buy some strings. These are Elixir strings. I recommend them for acoustic guitar. And I'll leave you a link for some picks that I like to use. I love to use the Dunlap Max Grip picks. So I'll leave those in the description section. And if you need more information about buying a nylon string guitar, I highly recommend this guitar right here. That's a review of the Yamaha C40. And here's an additional video with some more information about four reasons why it's a really good guitar. As always, if you found this useful, just click right here to subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. God bless. Bye.